Greetings everyone and welcome back to another cheap iPhone review. Last week I looked at a Conker and this week I'm looking at a V phone, not a Vodafone. You are mistaken. Although it does look like one of the budget phones that Vodafone does offer. God, there's a lot of phones in there. But this is not one of them. The brand is V phone and the model is Moon A20. It's a lot to take in. I picked this up two years ago, October 2022, and I've been wondering when I should review it. And I figured, why not get it out of the way for this week? It may not be anything special, but judging by the looks of it, it's pretty much a welcome device. Now, looking online, it says that this has two gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. However, that is completely incorrect because on the box it tells me the correct RAM and storage. Straight away, if you want to buy this phone, which you probably shouldn't, you'll get a bit bamboozled by these specifications. My job today is to entertain you lot and have a look at a cheapo phone and find out what the go with this thing is and have a laugh at a cheapo thing along the way. So if that's your cup of tea, sit back, get yourself relaxed, and let's dig into this thing. But if you can't wait any further, feel free to jump along because of the timestamps in the description. You can just... All right, so here it is, V20. No, it's not a V20, it's an A20. It's a V for an A20 moon. Yeah, I originally found this on Marketplace and it was listed for 75 bucks. I asked them if they'd do it for 50 bucks and I'll come pick it up. They said yes. And that was where I bought a whole bunch of phones for a job lot. It was a knockoff cashies. They've since closed down, rest in peace. But thanks for providing me with this and all those phones for the job lot. You've seen in the thumbnail, this is what it looks like. And it does look like one of the budget phones that Vodafone offers. The two that I've looked at so far, the Vodafone N10, and I don't remember the other one, but I'll have them carted up the top if you wanna take a look at those videos, because that's what this thing pretty much looks like. I don't know if this brand is anything significant. I've never heard of them before. They're probably sold in a specific country or it's just some off brand. You folks know a lot more about all these oddball brands that are hidden around the world. So feel free to let me know any details you know about the phone. Moon? They could have called it Sun, but I guess Moon was more depressing. 5-inch IPS display, 5-megapixel front camera, an 8-megapixel rear camera, 3,000 milliamp hour battery. Maybe 2,000, but not 3,000. Now, around the box, we've got V-Phone with a void sticker there, but just ignore that. At the top, we have the IMEIs listed. Feel free to look these up. Tell me where these have been pinched from. Let me know if they do correspond with V-Phone Moon Black A20 made in China. The sticker on the side here that tells me that it's a V-Phone A20 that I've said about 17 times at this point. 5.0, which is the screen. 6.0, which is likely the Android version. 3G, network likely. And OnePlus 8, which means one gig of RAM and eight gigs of storage. And the $75 price tag just there, but just ignore that. I've got the receipt in here. And then on the back here, A20, five inch IPS, full display, the cameras, the RAM, one gig and ROM, eight gig, 3000 milliamp hours, quad core. Does anyone want to take a guess right now? What do you think's in this? Do you reckon it's our glorious friend, the MT6580? Or do you reckon it's something else? Well, stay tuned. And face ID. I don't think that exists on this, but let's see. There it is. 21st of the 10th, 2022. Price, 50 bucks. V phone, mobile phone, eight gig with case and charger and box tested. Also, one thing I completely overlooked on the box, because the warranty is seven days on this, right? V phone offers a splendid 12 months of warranty. Is there any contact information or is it just, no, there's no contact. Okay, so who do you contact? If anything goes wrong with this, do you just contact who you purchased it from? Inside the box, we get a micro USB cable and then a plastic bag with the screen protector in it. That's cool. And a case but we don't want the case. Let's just leave the case in there. That's all good. Yeah, not really anything too out of the ordinary so far, but the phone itself, the V phone, that's what we're here for. We're here for the V phone. God, have a drinking game. How many times I'm gonna say V phone in this one, but here it is. And it's it's nothing too exciting, as I said. It looks like Vodafone's budget offerings, except it looks like it's from about 2015. Cause at the top, we've got the earpiece and the front five megapixel camera. Is it actually five megapixels? question. Supposedly it is. Wait till the camera test and you'll see further. It doesn't look like we've got any proximity sensors there, but uh, I'll see if I can make a call and wave and see if it works. The five inch IPS display, back, home and recents. At the top, we have the headphone jack and micro USB port. On the sides, we have two volume buttons and the power on button. At the bottom, a little hole for a microphone and the speaker grill. And on the other side, absolutely nothing. It's all plain. And this thing is all plastic, glass front, but plastic frame, plastic build. There's probably a very thin metal frame inside of this because this is very lightweight. Probably weighs about 100 grams roughly. But on the back though, it does look slightly nice. I will say that with this shimmery shiny texture going on and actually does have texture on the back as well. And um, 
The, the rear cameras, let's get these out of the way. It's kind of looking like an S20 Ultra sort of camera layout or maybe an A-series layout, but they've got like this little sort of camera bump and then they've got a camera bump in a camera bump or camera design in a camera. Just ignore me, it's fine. One rear camera just there, eight megapixels. And then we have our three decorative cameras and AI just there and an LED flash. Then we have designed by VPhone and the VPhone branding, popping the back cover off. Reveals the plastic back, the large orange battery. I've had a lot of phones with orange batteries. I believe a few x have had orange batteries and the Susan as well. I think that had a um, an orange battery too, but this is it. Lithium ion battery, capacity 3000 milliamp hours. Do not short the leads. I'll try not to, made by VPhone. It's like a potato chip by the way, but um, it's supposedly 3000 milliamp hours. And then inside we have micro SD card slot, two micro SIM slots, and we have NTC type approval, national telecommunication, what does that say there? Noi, Noisim car? Noisim car? I'm confused. What is this? Well, supposedly it's approved for that. Then we have the IMEI information, the branding, all that sort of stuff. It does have S57731E. 7731E, that sounds familiar. What's that from? Also QHDC. Does that mean quad HD or quarter HD? Probably quarter HD. It'll probably be 3G, but hey, it might claim that it does 4G. I originally intended to review this when I first got it actually, but I believe we bought stuff on AliExpress and I kind of forgot about it. But it's been sort of sitting to the side and I've been looking at it going, when do I want to review this thing? Today. Also, I know it takes forever to charge. I literally left it for about four hours and it reached 50%, so that's fun. Finally, time to power on the V phone. Did it just break? It's fine. On we go. Oh yeah, the vibration motor in this sounds like it's dying. It's uh, very, very, um, meh, meh. <laughs> The system files are also in the description for this, so feel free to comb through them and see what you find. I did find a folder called iWiz, I think it was called. Was it iWiz? Yeah, I-W-Z-Z. -Z. And in that folder is some wallpapers, so help yourself. Uh, but we're, we're booting up. Just give it a moment. It's a bit slow. There we go. No available network. It may not even register on a network, to be honest. I don't know. Straight away, I can tell you the display on this. It looks good on camera, but looking at it with the naked eye, it's a bit lacking. The Conquer SP6 that I had a look at last week was way better than this. This is very washed out, but it's definitely an IPS display, which is good, but it's nothing too spectacular. And this is also on the max brightness as well. It's not too bright at all, but it's fine for a cheapy phone. Swiping left and right, we've got nothing, but we do have applications, which is fairly stock for the most part. Browser, calculator, calendar, camera, clock, contacts, downloads, email, face unlock. Oh, face ID is here. Cool. Facebook, file Explorer, FM Radio, Gallery, Google Messaging, Music, Phone, Play Store, Settings, Sound Recorder, Voice Search, and YouTube. So I've got plenty of things to test on here. Holding on the main screen, I just tapped on the, the widget. Fast, speedy. At least this is fun. Wallpapers, what have we got? Oh, allow Launcher 3 to access photos, media, and files on your device. Yes, please. Oh, so we've got this wallpaper, this wallpaper. Are they stolen off stock or are they stolen off something else or are they completely original? I never know with wallpapers. I just kind of just go, yep, I think I know where they're from. But just take a look at the display there. You can pretty much see the colors just are very, very washed out. But as I said, cheapy phone, cheap display, all makes sense at the end of the day. That rhymed. Widgets is just widgets, nothing too spectacular. And settings is allow rotation. Hang on a second. Can I, can I just, can I, can I do this? Oh my God, I can do this. Wow, I can use it like a tablet. And the goo, oh, it's changed its whole little layout sort of thing. That's kind of nifty. At least I know that the accelerometer works. Swiping down at the top, still no network, but we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data, do not disturb, airplay mode, auto rotate, flashlight location and audio profile. But the torch, it's not bad. Is there two in there? Oh, I shouldn't have looked at it. Ow. Oh, I don't know if there's two LEDs in there or not, but it lights up the camera bum. Look at that. That's kind of nifty. You'll see in the camera test how powerful that torch is. We still don't have network as of yet. So I'm going to go straight into settings and we're going to have a quick dive through this. Let's connect to my Wi-Fi network. Well, only 2.4 gigahertz. Standard Gboard as usual. Listen to the vibration motor. It doesn't sound too happy at all. It's like on its last legs. It's been operating for so many years and it's just like, I'm giving up. I can't do this anymore. Oh, all the other networks just came up. 
as well. But still it's only 2.4 gigahertz. The Bluetooth device is ready to power. Too bad the welcome phones didn't say that. I definitely would have had a field day if they did. SIM cards shows Telstra Mobile, but I'm not getting reception. So let's keep further investigating. Cellular networks, preferred network type, auto 3G. Will that help us? That would likely be a no. Has Telstra already shut down 3G? No, surely they haven't. Honestly, it's probably not even worth worrying about the 3G quality on this, because I definitely know this is 3G, and it's going to sound about as good as you'd expect for a 3G phone to sound during calls. But soon 3G will be completely demolished from Australia, and all the devices that I do have on 3G I won't be able to use anymore, which is kind of sad. In display, we have incoming call light. This has a notification LED? No, it doesn't have a notification LED. It means the back flash is going to go crazy. Yeah, no, it definitely doesn't have a notification LED, unless you count that speck of dust. Watch this powerhouse go. Wow, speedy. The little hamster inside, he, he's working hard. Prompt and notification. Okay, not too much there. Audio profiles. Uh, oh, oh, that's strange. If there's no best loudness, that usually means we don't have MediaTek. Applications, we're gonna see what this is then. Spectrum. all right, that makes sense, Spectrum. Boot res select. No, that's not boot res select. That's boot res cell cat. We've seen you before. I can't wait to play around with that. It'll come up as a welcome, 100%. Browser, calculator, calendar, camera, uh, all that sort of good stuff there. I don't think there's too much in here. Actually, no, I'm just assuming there could be something really cool in here, like face unlock listed twice. Folder view. Okay. Google account manager. So I can definitely put my burner Gmail on this and we can load up the Play Store and do some cool stuff with that and more spread room stuff. Settings, setting storage. Maybe we can change the specs. Marshmallow, so it is Android 6. That's what it said on the little sticker on the box. In settings, it actually does say Android 8.1. We know that's not the case. Does this even have one gig of RAM? It's got eight gigs of storage, so I know that. Battery, percentage of charge, heartbeat sync settings. The selected application will not participate in power settings. No third party application is installed. Heartbeat synchronization, sure thing. Yeah, all right, all right, that's another thing to add to the list of things I've never seen on welcome devices before, but here you go. Memory does <laughs> calculating. Yeah, calculating, use, use that power. Processing power, buddy. Uh, yeah, one gig of RAM in this, supposedly. Location, security, I guess we can do, oh, face lock, here we go, face lock. There's no fake fingerprint as well, so we'll do face unlock. Oh yeah, this one, I've seen it before. Disclaimer, your phone may be unlocked by people or objects that look similar to you. So basically don't use this, just stick with a pin. New face. Oh, got it. Yep, 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 oh, yep. Avoid wearing hats, sunglasses, and respirator. I'll try not to wear one of them. Face cannot be detected. Face. The image is blurred, do not shake the face. <laughs> the image is blurred, do not shake the face. Did you see that? Hold steady, smiles, don't move the muscle. Okay. Wake up the screen to use face unlock. Wake up. <laughs> yes. Uh, very much yes. All right. Wow. Using all five megapixels of power to recognize it. Is that the photo that we've got on file? Yeah, that's it. So another random server in China now has that photo of me. There's probably a bunch of servers that have my ugly mug on file from all these devices that I test and do face unlocking with. It's getting quite warm just by going through settings. I'm gonna add my Gmail to this. May take a while. There we go. Oh yeah, that's... It's old school. All right, I'm signed into my Gmail. It'll probably scream at me soon, so just be prepared for that. Google language and input. Is there anything? Wait, timer switch machine? Can we go back to the future, can we? Power on. Oh, the power. You can schedule the power on and off. Wait, no, it's an alarm. So it's a timer switch machine that's an alarm. That, yes, that's one of those things that you just go, yes, okay, agree continue on. Accessibility, not a whole lot in here, but you've got the basic stuff. Developer options, I've already put on. I'm not going to put the window animations down. We'll just leave it. In about phone though, Wallace update. Let's see what it says. J106C vPhone Moon B18 V001 2022. Okay, so it was new in 2022, was it? Up to date, as always. Fun fact, we have a Unix serial number, which I might be able to change in settings, actually. I'll see when I get to Quick Shortcut Maker. Model number, Moon. Android version, 8.1. We have Oreo, but is it actually Oreo? Oh, does it even work? Or can I just make Oreo rave party? Nope. That's as far as I can get with this one. Kernel version, just there, and build number. And that's it within settings. So we know it's Spectrum, one gig of RAM, supposedly. Eight gigs of storage, supposedly. Whatever CPU is in this is supposedly a quad core, but this thing is just... 
pretty sluggish. I mean, not that you can tell there, but I'm sure once I start testing this out, it'll start to really, really struggle. But can I just say how hot it is getting? Like, holy moly, the back is just, woof. It's all right, buddy. I haven't even opened the browser yet. Let's open the browser then. <laughs> the animation was just like, T -t -t -t. all right, Google, let's go V phone moon A20. How fast is it? Oh, I put V phone up. That's fine. V phone moon. There we go. See, look, two gig of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. There's one on eBay for a hundred bucks. If you really want to buy one of these in case it has something really cool on it, you can. Once again, 32 gigs and two gig there. Some pictures for it. Amazon has 2.5 out of uh, five stars. Let's see Amazon. It's loading Amazon. It's getting there. Oh, okay. Oh, look at this. Oh, hang on. Oh, 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 oh. Let's see the reviews for it. I want to see how angry people are at this thing. Did you see the brand name of that? Landvo. <laughs> a Landvo. It's not a Land Rover, it's a Landvo. Currently unavailable. We don't know when or if this item will be back in stock. Trust me, it won't be back in stock anytime soon. Look on Amazon. 4G and 64 gigs. False advertising. I'm sorry, but what? V phone. Is this a subdivision of Xcody? Is this technically an Xcode? I want, it probably is. It's probably a welcome, rebranded by Xcody, and then branded as V phone. No, it's not the right phone, actually. It says F50, not A20. Uh, but just curious, let's see what the, um, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, this is chugging along. You can do it, buddy. You can do it. Did that say extended RAM? <laughs> Extendedable. Ah, uh, extendable. Yes, yes indeed. God, I haven't looked at a welcome listing in a long time. Ah, oh, how I've missed you. Can I just say that browsing is absolutely horrible on this? <laughs> it's useless. Um, it just locks up. They, oh, oh, top reviews from the United Kingdom. Very bad. Not happy with the product. Feel I wasted 64 pounds and I feel I should get a refund as the phone should last longer than a week. I agree, sketch 1314. Stay well clear of. I'd send it back, but smash it up the wall. Wooden load apps not compatible. <laughs> Mate, that's a bit too hectic, just smashing it up. You could have got a refund first. Uh, yeah, people are not happy with this. But if the listing's anything to go off, V phone is Xcody. So I'm technically looking at an Xcody phone, which actually honestly does make more sense. Um, but let's, let's get out of the browser, please. Calculator. Just, <laughs> I swear this Nokia N90 that's running Symbian is faster than this. Let's just try and get through this review as quickly as possible. Go straight into camera, looking as basic as ever. You've got a face beauty mode. Oh, that's that's to change it from face beauty to normal mode. Features, uh, you have a timer, some grid lines. Let's talk about the autofocus in a few seconds. The LED flash and swap cameras. Gallery down the bottom there and settings cog. Look at the autofocus, right? It goes whoop. It's kind of cool, but it doesn't work though. It's fake. Yeah, that's definitely a fake autofocus. Settings wise is pretty basic there. General settings is fairly basic. Camera settings has face detect, freeze frame display, ZSL, mirror reflection, manual exposure, burst, ISO, metering, saturation, picture size, picture quality, which was super fine. And the picture size is eight megapixels. So you can do some tinkering with some of the shots to make them look better. But wait till I actually show you the photos and videos from this. Just you wait. In video, H.264, time lapse and slow motion. I have done slow motion. You'll get to see that soon. Um, front camera quality is 480p and the back camera is 720p. And swapping to the front camera, looks like that. No autofocus, nothing like that. The weird thing is with zooming though, look at this. The lines though, I've never seen this before. Like the lines coming up sort of thing. It's sort of giving you the illusion that you've got like a telephoto lens in here. So it's like, there we go. But the zoom is just the tiniest amount. It's two times digital zoom and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and splice in the photos and videos that I took with this. Have a look at them. See what you think of them. You know, go in with an open mind. It's only a $100 phone on eBay. Well, this person's asking $100 for it. Um, so take that in. We'll be back and we'll continue on with this.
This looked smooth, it is no longer smooth, uh, but this is the camera test on the V-Phone Moon. You know what? Doesn't look too bad so far. Do you have focus though? You do not. Oh, sad. Um, so the focus in the photos is fake, because it kind of just goes in. Pink flowers though? Actually, they're more purple, but sure, smalls, it's uh, close enough. Oh, look at the grain as well. It's got a nice little aesthetic going on to it. What about the white flowers? Wow, they're um, shining bright there. I've got hay fever, so my eyes are all watery and stuff, so I look a little bit um, terrible in the selfies, but I'm sure you get the point of what's going on. They look reasonable. There's these fellas there. There's a weed. He's no longer there now. Lemon. Brick wall. Cool. These two, ah, that's close. There we go. Remember, the four decorative cameras on here. No, four? No, there's three of them. Three decorative cameras. Um, wasn't there another lemon here? Oh, there it is there. Okay, yellow, green, yellow, green. Zenny? I like the film grain now, actually. I kind of like it. But does it look good? I don't know. Oh, look, there's a burp. There's a burp. Look, he's hopping around. Look, he's having a good day. Yeah, wee. The sky's nice today. And the faraway aircon with a uh, uh, two times, <laughs> was that even two times? Uh, digital zoom looks a little something like that. I'm gonna show you all the lines that pop up. It's so weird, um, but yep, there you go. That's the camera test off of the rear camera of the V-Phone Moon. Are you enjoying it so far? Is it good? It better be for what I paid for it. <laughs> okay, the LED flash is bright, but does it help outside? You know, it kind of does. Someone's yelling next door. That's nice. The camera quality is still pretty terrible with the whole graininess and blurriness. And it's not that sharp at all and it's quite ghosty now. But, yeah, you can't really say this camera, I don't think. It just works. Well, you can't even see the lemon tree. Oh, wow. Uh, this looks good. Cool. Um, can I, can I zoom in? Oh, what, 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 what? Why is there lines on the screen? Oh, okay. Yeah. I can zoom in. I'm doing something. Rest in peace, good sir. The graininess of this camera is something that I have not seen in quite a long time. It makes it look like it's taken from a 1999 camera. The rear camera for 8 megapixels, looking at it close up though, it's washed out and there's just a lot of grain going on with it. Also the exposure is all over the joint as well. If you're going for that old school retro vibe, maybe, but um, other than that though, it is fairly average and the zoom is just so tiny. It's just... Boop. Front camera, on the other hand, looks about the same as a VGA camera, to be fairly honest. Doesn't have a whole lot going for it. Videos as well was 720 by 480 on the front camera, at a whole 10 frames a second, mind you. And the back camera was 1280 by 720, at 30 frames a second. The good thing with the cameras, though, is not the cameras itself, but the microphone. The microphone on this is actually not too bad. Unlike the Conker that I reviewed last week, that was really iffy with picking up sound, but this perfectly fine. It almost sounded like there's two microphones in there. I will admit the grain looked cool at first, and then when I played it back on my PC, I went, ah. Clock contacts, downloads, email, face unlock, we don't really need to go into. Facebook file explorer looks like the stock one, I'd say. Yes? No? This looks different. Got derpy Android there. What file manager is this? It's not stock. It's some custom one. FM radio. Should we try the FM radio? Yeah, let's try it. It's always interesting to test the FM radio on these. I might listen to a song that I haven't listened to in like 27 years. Did I pick up a Chinese radio station? Ah, I picked up the devil.
Maybe I just don't have good reception in here. What's that radio station in GTA 3? Is it Double Clef? Ah. Gold's 104.3. Oh, we got, we got authentic vinyl sounds too. Okay, that was really fun. Gallery, which actually, when I reset this phone, there was no setup, but when I went to gallery for the first time, it asked me, can it make phone calls? I just agreed to it. Google, messaging, music. Speaker test. Oh, see, look, it allow music to make and manage phone calls. Why would music want to make and manage phone calls? Okay. Come to think of it, didn't I review an Xcody that looked very similar to this? Uh, the Mate 10 or the Mate 20, I believe? It kind of looks like the Xcody Mate 10. Kind of. But that had MediaTek in it. This has spread... Oh, face unlock. Uh, what was my pin? That's okay. BFG division time, though. Ooh, hello. Hey, that doesn't sound too bad. One redeeming factor about this. Wait, can you hear that? Oh, it's the sound of my hard drives moving. Okay. It's got some punch to it, and it's not too loud. It's just about right. The BFG Division sounds pretty good on it. Let me try the terrible song that I made and never done anything with. Does this sound any good? Let's try the terrible song that I made. Pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, that speaker's actually fairly good. The one redeeming factor about this so far, not the choppy performance, not the uh, really good display, but the speaker on this is good. It's not a big spurker though. Blessed DJ1000 for that big spurker. Moving swiftly on, phone, play store, we'll have to go into sound recorder. What do you look like? Empty list, allow. Allow. Every app needs access to make phone calls. Voice search. Oh, let's try voice search. VPhone Moon A20. Wow. It recognized it. Amazing. My accent isn't that terrible after all. Well, we can do the YouTube test. If it loads. Who wants to see Costa Rica 4K? Never mind. Oh, have they ditched support for Marshmallow, have they? Yeah, I believe I read a comment that said Marshmallow now doesn't work with YouTube, I don't think. Let me just actually go into the Play Store to see if it opens. Ah, it could be updating in the background because it looks fairly old. I could pretty much do the rest of this review without even going to the Play Store, so that doesn't matter. I actually do have the Costa Rica in 4K video file on my micro SD card. I'll play it and we'll see what it looks like in 4K. Oh. Okay, I'll try another one then. <laughs> See, gallery to make phone calls. Oh, can't play this video. Not having good success here. Okay, play store. Wait. Oh, let's just find out the specs of this and play some games, I think. Well, Geekbench 5 is not going to run on this, so we won't be doing Geekbench, but I'll just install the spec apps, and I think I'll just sideload GTA 3 on this. I've installed Device Info Hardware, GTA 3, Quick Shortcut Maker, and CPU System Info. So I'm going to do gaming first, and then we'll check the specs. But so far, performance-wise on this, I'd much prefer the Conquer SP6. They had a lot more features, and it cost me less. This is pretty much just a welcome device at the end of the day. Can't wait to get to Quick Shortcut Maker and see what I can fiddle around with. But here we go, GTA 3. Don't mind all the fingerprints, ugh. Everything's on maximum, let's go for GTA 3. How do you think it'll run? I reckon it'll struggle. Just by the general performance of this thing, it's, it's gonna struggle. Maybe I spoke too soon. Bitchy. Oh, the fingerprints everywhere. Drive is what I shall do, get in the car, Claude. Whoa, it's actually like, yeah? It's a little sort of choppy, but for the most part. Oh. If I put the settings down ever so slightly, it'd be a lot better. 
but this is GTA 3. It originally ran on a PS2. I shouldn't be too harsh on this. It works. I definitely know that Doom would be fine on this. And I'm just running people over, which is fine. Let's get through this. I just want to see the specs of this. There you go. What have we got in this thing? 960 by 540 display. Supposedly one gig of RAM and eight gigs of storage. Platform SP7731C. Wasn't that printed on the bottom there? It is, isn't it? Spreadroom SC7731C. Actually, was it the Peacock that had the Spreadroom in it? Yes, the Peacock had the Spreadroom SC7731E in it. So it's potentially a Peacock with the Mali 400 MP GPU, but it's definitely a quad core in this. 540 by 960 resolution. And do we have multi-touch one, two, Oh, I was gonna say one point. What? That's not even multi touch. This is one point, a uh, two point multi touch. Very basic. Can I also say the phone is now extremely hot? It's overworked itself playing GTA 3. Memory, one gig and eight gig. Camera, eight megapixels, five megapixels. Battery, 2000 milliamp hours. That's probably what I'd say this is, not 3000 milliamp hours. <laughs> See the sensor at the most 60 degrees. Accelerometer, light, and proximity, but I don't think. We've got anything past an accelerometer. And CPU system info probably has the same stuff. SP7731C, 1H10 over C. Okay, sure. Uh, yep, Android 6, no root access. We know it's Spreadroom now. Eight gigs of internal storage, one gig of RAM. Not quite there with the display, but close enough. Batteries, 100 milliamp hours. Yeah, powering a Tic Tac. Thermal, 20 degrees and 20 degrees. Nah, it's still pretty warm. Sensors, just generic light sensor and proximity, so. Yeah, nothing too spectacular here. Let's go to Quick Shortcut Maker so I can finish looking at this thing. It wasn't really that exciting, honestly. It's got a funny name, V Phone Moon, ah. But what is this truly? Oh my God. This is probably the most options I've ever seen in any device before. Holy moly. We can put 64 gigs of storage. We can put four gigs of RAM. We can put 4G on this and we can change it to any one of those, take your pick. Let's do A20, just curious. I'll set it on Android 6 as well. Let's see what happens now. We're still a VFARN, still a VFARN. Come on, buddy, show me welcome, or oh, Xcody. Like a little low light reflection there, you know, attention to detail. So out of this whole entire review, now's the time where I'm actually having fun, stuffing around with this sort of stuff. Let me go into settings. Oh, so it's the Moon A20 now. Okay, with um, Android 6. And now does device info hardware incorrectly report it as having 32 gigs? No, can't full device info hardware. I'll go back into Quick Shortcut Maker. I'll go back to Boot Res Cell Kit. Try saying that 10 times fast, oof. Even though this is called Boot Res Cell Kit, all I'm doing is just changing the model of this. Because if I change it to A19, and now I go into settings, and then go down to about phone, it's now the A19. So that's all I'm doing. So I'll just put it back to moon then. I'll put real, real signal and leave it. Let's see if we've got anything else in here. Cause there was a settings one as well. Runtime test is probably just testing stuff most likely. Please touch the screen with two fingers. Okay. What's shell? Not a whole lot. UA setting. This is the one, isn't it? Oh no. I can't change the boot animation. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, this definitely wasn't exciting then. This was very boring. The V phone moon is a generic phone that's as generic as generic's gonna get. It's not even a welcome. Can't even call it a welcome, but it probably is, as I said, a welcome and then Xcody and then this, most likely. In comparison to the Conquer SP6 that I reviewed last week, the Conquer 100% wins. This is just, why did I pay $50 for this thing? Cause it looked interesting with the whole decorative cameras and the shiny back. Um, and I've never heard of the brand before. That's pretty much it. This has been a very boring review. I'm so sorry. I thought there was going to be a lot more fun stuff on here. At least we got to see the performance though. Uh, super speedy. I don't remember how the Peacock was during testing, but I'm pretty sure it was probably the same speed as this. Let's go ahead and tear this apart, I think. I've breezed through this because it's just not that exciting. There was just no funny stuff or anything like that. Well, I mean, there's a few funny things, but nothing to really call home about. I couldn't call home anyways, because of no reception. The back is just... All right, let's go ahead and see the cooling of this. I want to see the cooling. What have they put in here? Do they even put a thermal pad in? Well, it's wrong about it being a media tech. I thought we would have seen the good old friend MT6580 in this. Not the case. I'm seeing more and more phones with spread trims in them. 
nowadays. Maybe we're moving away from MediaTek and we're moving to Spreadtrum or Unisoc, which is a bit of a change of pace, I guess. Gotta shake things up every now and again. We can't have MT6580s every single video, can we? I mean, we could. Let's not laugh at our friend, the MT6580. He tries. He's just, he's a little slow. He's slightly outdated, but he still powers a lot of phones to this day. And we can't be too harsh on him. He gives it his best. Also, someone's going to have to tell me about this NTC stuff. No idea what it is. Probably just some bullshit that they've printed on the sticker because, you know, they've got a lot of room. They're like, what else can we put? Yeah, done. Okay. Wait, the vibration motor was up there? Oh, okay. What's down here then? Oh. Loudspeaker, some contacts. Not a whole lot going on in here. Oh my God, this thing is entirely plastic. There's no, oh my, no way. No fucking way, brother. You're telling me that this thing doesn't even have a metal frame? Every welcome device I've had a look at has had at least a metal frame. Even if it was as thin as a Pringles can, um, it still had a metal frame in it. This isn't real, Smalls is crazy, and using a metal tool to pull out everything. Uh-huh. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. But here's the digitizer. It's sexy, baby. There we go. Also look at the little flash too. Little tiny flex ribbon just casually hanging there. The Conker SP6 actually had a thermal pad in it. This just didn't even try. Okay. <laughs> Wee! God damn, it's grade A bull plop. Okay, my memory is absolutely horrendous. I'm pretty sure I'd remember if a phone didn't have a metal frame. Oh my God, look. Oh, it's using the LCD. That's it, it's just using the LCD. Wow. Well, this wouldn't survive a Ben test then. Uh, just shh. the motherboard though is as generic as ever. That there surely can't be an eight megapixel camera. There is a code on the camera that says 5FD8. Not that you can really see that though. Just there, 5FD8. Yeah, see the camera on the front has 255AB. Could it be five megapixel interplating to eight? and then two megapixel interplating up to five, perhaps, that would probably most likely seem it, because there's no way that's eight megapixel. The thing's the size of a Tic Tac, there's no way it's eight megapixels. The sticker there as well says everything we need to know about this device. It's a J1086B. Honestly, I don't need to take the shielding off because I believe it's a Spotrum in this. One gig RAM, eight gig storage, makes sense. That's what it says on the sticker. I'm gonna believe it. The LCD is all it was using to dissipate heat and thus why it doesn't weigh that much as well. They really cut corners on this. Yeah, that, that, that thing would easily just bend in half. I just, psh. I would have loved to have seen Zach pull apart this phone. I'm not going to do a bend test on it. I would like to keep it working just in case uh, one day there's no more phones left in the world and I want to use this as my main daily driver for some particular reason. All those people on Amazon who were giving it bad reviews, that one guy said that he smashed it. I kind of feel that this wasn't worth smashing. It was just very boring. That's all. And, and laggy. But it wasn't worth smashing though. Shouldn't have smashed it, buddy. You could have given it second life as a wall decoration could have could have put it on your wall and said look i own this or a cool party trick hey do you want to see the moon you disappear for a couple of seconds and then you come back with this in your hands and say here's the moon and then your friends go oh why are we friends with this guy again because i'm full of cool jokes <laughs> ah this just wasn't fun at all i honestly actually feel bad about putting this video out now because it just wasn't that entertaining maybe that's why i put it off because it's just, it's boring. And I skipped over like a lot of things. I definitely haven't gone super in depth with this, that's for sure. I've just breezed over it. But you know what? I don't think there was anyone else that has reviewed this. Um, I've reviewed it and I'll give it my conclusion of it's not that good. I mean, you could make the argument of um, with the whole V-phone thing. Don't we have a Vodafone phone at home? We have a Vodafone phone at home. Vodafone phone at home. You know, I'd really like it if we found a Lisa phone, so then I could start the video by saying, You're tearing me apart, Lisa! Why are you being so hysterical? Why are you being so... lying? Oh, I put the screw in the wrong place. Whoops, my bad. Hi, can I have Dawson Dawson Red Roses, roses please? please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? That'll be 18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Bye! Oh, the room is so great. It's so terrible and it's so great. I tried to watch the room a couple of weeks ago. I got through 20 minutes of it and fell asleep. <laughs> Couldn't do it. I'm like, ah, oh, no, I can't do this today. Today is not the day to make fun of the room. So I said to myself, I'll do it another Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, just any Tuesday. All right, now that I've finagled and fucked around with this for like six hours, does it still live on? 
cool. Certainly does. Did I just help the vibration motor? Sounds better. I'll display the specs to the side of the really uninteresting phone. The really uninteresting V phone. Wonder what the V stood for in V phone. Very phone? Villain phone. Nah, I can't think of anything good. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it all works. Um, let me see. Did I give the vibration motor more punch to it? I think I did. Oh, I helped you out, buddy. Well, there you go. It lives to see another day. And... Oh. Fixed it. Yeah, this was a very uninteresting review. Thought it would have been something a little more special, a little more interesting, but it wasn't, unfortunately. So, there you go. But at least the back looks nice. Well, folks, I think my job's done for today. I've had a look at this thing that I've had in my collection for two years now, and I've wanted to look at it. I finally looked at it and it just wasn't that interesting. At least it had a lot of selections for changing the specs. We could change it to any model, well, within that category. We could change the RAM and the storage and all that stuff, but yeah, it's just a really boring welcome device. Not that it even said welcome anywhere. Doesn't matter. You made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. But if you had to use the timestamps, um, that's completely fine. <laughs> You've probably just watched like five minutes of it and went, oh no, this thing's terrible. No, no, no. And you two have probably fallen asleep. <laughs> like forget this one. Completely understandable if you have to use the timestamps. I can mark this off my to-do list at least. I've done it, finished, looked at it. That's the video for this week. I hope you've all enjoyed this. I hope it gave you some sort of entertainment at the end of the day. This is what I do, look at cheap devices and sometimes we have some really funny ones and sometimes we have some really boring ones like this. Hopefully I'll receive the items that I've ordered off AliExpress this week and I'll be able to do a review for the S26 Ultra next week hopefully, if all goes to plan and I receive it on time. Feel free to let me know what you thought of this one down in the comments below, and let me know if you've heard of V-Phone before, and if they're secretly ex goatee in a trench coat, like in disguise, shady sunglasses sort of thing, I don't know. I think I've rambled enough for today, so thank you again for watching, I really do appreciate it, and as always, please take care, stay safe, be good people, I'll see you all in the next one, which should be something more interesting than this. I mean, I could literally do my phone tour. That would be more fun than this video, to be fairly honest. I could literally sit here and be like, N90, flip, cool, fun, wee, wee. See how much more fun that was than the whole entire review itself? I should do the phone tour. Well, part one of it. Anyways, all right, everyone. Until I see you all next, keep being awesome. Take care of yourself. Do something good for yourself. Go out and buy yourself some lunch or, you know, treat yourself to something. Because this was a very depressing review. So you should get out of bed or get up off your chair or uh, you may be watching this in a speeding car or something like that. Immediately stop what you're doing, put your phone down and go get yourself something nice. Treat yourself to something nice. Please, do it. You deserve it. You absolutely 100% deserve it. And with that, you're looking after yourself and everyone deserves to do something good for themselves every once in a while. So that's Moore's words of wisdom for today. I'll see you all in the next one, and remember, when you look at the moon, you'll see this phone. No, you won't. I'm gone now. Bye. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. You can tell by the way I use my walk, I'm a walk, man. No time to talk.